At bssaudio.com, on the SoundWeb London product page, there's a link to download a very useful product comparison chart. It's something I'll be referring to throughout this discussion. There are 19 products listed there and numerous features which they do or do not support. One of the strengths of SoundWeb London is the sheer number of different products you can choose from because this basically allows you to buy only the features you need. Let's take a look at two fairly popular models, the Blue 806 and the Blue 326. The Blue 806 and Blue 326 have identical rear panels and nearly identical front panels, the only difference being the product name. The only other difference is internal. The Blue 806 has DSP chips for audio processing, while the Blue 326 does not. More on that concept later. Let's take a look at the rear panel connectors, moving from right to left. These four I.O. card slots, labeled A, B, C, and D, are found on any device with the custom I.O. feature. Each slot can accommodate any of six available cards, the analog input card, the analog output card, the digital input card, the digital output card, the acoustic echo cancellation input card, and the telephone hybrid card. Each card is a four-channel card, therefore there can be up to 16 channels of audio flowing through these card slots. The analog input card gives you four mic line inputs. Each of the four inputs has an individually adjustable pre-analog to digital conversion microphone preamp. If you have a line level source, just leave the preamp gain at 0 dB. If you have a microphone, apply an appropriate amount of gain to bring the mic up to line level. Each of the four inputs also has individually adjustable true 48 volt phantom power. The analog output card gives you four line level outputs. Connect these to any line level destination, such as the inputs on a power amplifier, or a powered speaker, or an analog recording device, or a wireless headphone transmitter, or a mixer, or a set of low impedance headphones, etc. The digital input card can receive digital audio in either of two formats, AES-EBU or SPDIF. With each format, one physical cable carries two channels of digital audio, commonly referred to as a stereo pair. So, for example, you can connect up to two AES-EBU cables for a total of two stereo pairs, that's four channels. Or, you could connect up to two SPDIF cables for a total of two stereo pairs. Or, you could connect one AES-EBU cable and one SPDIF cable, again, for a total of two stereo pairs. And you could even connect four cables for a total of four stereo pairs. However, you would only be able to select and process two of them simultaneously within the device. The digital output card's physical connectors work a bit differently than the ones on the digital input card. Output 1 can send out a stereo pair of digital audio in either format, AES-EBU or SPDIF. Same goes for output 2. The other connectors on the digital output card are special clock inputs. These allow the card to receive and sync to the clock signal from the device to which the card is connected. The AEC input card has the same capabilities as the analog input card, except it also has two built-in DSP chips used exclusively for AEC processing, which is a specialized and resource-intensive type of processing. Generally speaking, if you're building a teleconferencing system, any mic intended to communicate with remote callers should be connected to an AEC card. The AEC processing will then eliminate any potential annoying echoes and noise during the call. Another common use for AEC beyond just teleconferencing is ambient noise compensation. In ambient noise compensation systems, it's often beneficial to connect the ambient noise sensing mic to an AEC card. Within the software, each input gets split after the preamp and A to D conversion. One split, called the AEC path, goes through AEC, noise cancellation, and automatic gain control. The other split, called the dry path, bypasses all processing. The dry path is ultra low latency and therefore useful for sending the mic to local speakers within the room for local sound reinforcement. 
The dry path is identical to a standard analog input. The telephone hybrid card is also useful for teleconferencing. It gives the SoundWeb London the ability to send and receive phone calls to and from a standard analog POTS line. The telephone hybrid card gives you a single bi-directional connection to a phone line. And it has an additional tip ring pair called SET, which can optionally be connected to a standard phone, allowing that phone set to be used as a simple dialer with zero programming required. The telephone hybrid card also comes with two analog mic line inputs. These are functionally identical to those found on the analog input card. Each of the six card types has an LED with a unique color. This allows you to identify what kinds of cards are installed, simply by looking at the rear panel. A green LED means it's an analog input card. Orange means analog output card. Blue means digital input card. Red means digital output card. White means AEC input card. And a yellow LED means it's a telephone hybrid card. Card type indication also exists on the front panel, where each of the four card slots has its own dedicated information section. Let's zoom in on the section for card slot A. Here are the card type indicators. This means an analog input card is installed into card slot A. This means an analog output card is installed into slot A. This means a digital input card is installed into slot A. This means a digital output card is installed into slot A. This means an AEC input card is installed into slot A. And this means a telephone hybrid card is installed into slot A. Notice that each channel also has a red clip LED, which illuminates when a signal is above plus 18.5 dBU, and a green signal presence LED, which illuminates when signal is above minus 20 dBU. Each channel also has this third yellow LED, which indicates different things depending on which card is installed. If you've installed a card which supports phantom power, this illuminates when phantom power is turned on. Or if you've installed a digital input card or digital output card, this illuminates when the digital audio has proper clock sync.